What's up guys? Welcome back to Diesel Creek. If this is your first time joining us, my name's Matt. Behind me, maybe you can possibly see peeking through the, the bushes here, we've got a Fiat Alice 645B we're going to be reviving today. I've taken this machine and one other one on a deal to do some demolition work for a guy. So these things have been sitting for at least 12 years and we're going to see if we can't get them fired up today. Well, we're going to do both of them today, but you're only going to see one in this video. Anyways, let's try to climb in through the brushes here and see what we can see. The brushes. The bushes. Let's see what we can see. So, these pieces of equipment have been stored under roof here, which is a big help, but that didn't spare them from the, uh, from the kidzu vines. I think that's how you say that. These vines just grow all over everything. We got uh, two, two international tractors in here. A Fiat Alice 645B. And Big Cat 977K back there. But that's another video. The old Fiat Alice here. She doesn't look like she's in too bad a shape. This uh, location that we're at was a former junkyard, which is pretty much mostly cleaned up at this point. Like I said, it's been shut down for at least 12 years. And that's the last time these were possibly running we don't even know if they were running then they've been just sitting here waiting on somebody like me that tire sunk into the ground and flat got a nice big heavy set of forks on here I bet you the forks are eight feet long That'll be handy. I'm gonna look around the property here and see if I can find a bucket for this thing because it'd be nice to have a bucket too. If you guys have been following the channel for a while, you'll remember I have that big Clark Michigan wheel loader, which is about twice the size of this one. Uh, it's really bigger than what I need. So this is actually more what I'm looking for. This machine weighs about 26,000 pounds and it has a 150 horse diesel engine in her. So we have to clean this thing off and see what we can make happen. <laughs> Here's some some proof seems like every time I do a revival video people are like oh that stuff has only been sitting for two weeks or a couple months or maybe a year tops look at how grown in to the rusted out panel these vines are can't make that up guys I'm gonna bet that that tree wasn't here when this thing was parked either and that tree's a good eight or ten years old you guys want to count the rings freeze the video count them <laughs> Yeah! <laughs> 
All right, well, we can actually see what we're working with now here. Apparently, this is the VW edition of the Fiat Alice. We've got a battery without leads. That's interesting. Don't have any more of those handy. Oh, we've got more vintage. That's, that's great. And more cut leads. Apparently somebody needed the copper more than we do. Quite the interesting problem here. The vines are grown in such a way that we can't really get in there to cut them very easily. Hopefully the set of pruners can do it. I think those are also tin snips. Yeah, same thing. See what the uh, radiator has to offer here. Well, there's moisture in there, but can't really see a whole lot. It's definitely, definitely low. Interesting design Fiat Alice has here for the side access panels. Yeah, we need to get some croil on these bad boys. Hinge is a good unseizing here. Can't wiggle this guy free. Oh yeah, she's loosening right up. Ooh, that's dangerous. That's a poor design. Well, uh, it looks like you're gonna knock yourself out. <laughs> yeah, that's like a guillotine. a guillotine. Yeah. You want to work on me? <laughs> no, you don't. Way to go, Fiat. So we're under the hood here now, having a little peek under her dress. Got more vintage wrapped around every part. Look at that, wrapped up around the exhaust there. She's got a turbo. The ID tag down here says Alice Chalmers, although I cannot make out the model number or anything. Maybe one of you guys in the comments will know. So we're missing battery leads from the boxes up to our starter here, but I'm pretty certain that I have some really heavy duty jumper cables that I can just put from there to there and to some batteries and we should be golden. What's your side look like, bud? Good. Big hole in the manifold. You don't need a proper manifold. Hey, it's got more of an exhaust than the other loader does. Yeah, see that. <laughs> that flange, that flange thickness is more than the other one has. Pull the old dipstick here and see what she's got. Got some nice black oil, but it's, you know, at least it's over the hash lines. Yeah, looks like it's right on the money, actually. That's pretty impressive. Actually, she's a hair over full, but the engine's leaning, so that could be why. Oh, dead. Well, it's got transmission fluid, so that's something. Yep, looks like the old exhaust manifold's seen some better days there. <sighs> Let's have a peek in the old air filter. Let's see how she's fared through the years. It should just come off. Sounds like a tank. There we go. Good lord. I see a little bit of mouse nestage down here, but the filter doesn't seem to be too bad. There. Oh yeah, the mice, the mice have been in there. <laughs> oh yeah. Good. Not too bad. I wouldn't even pull the inner one. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the filter still looks okay. I like the metal cage ones because the mice can get in there and ruin the element. All right, I guess it's time we should see if this tire holds air.
going on with this tire, but all I've managed to do is get covered in rust. Huh. It started to take air, then it won't. It's got enough, we can get it out of here. It just occurred to me, I didn't show you guys the fuel tank. It's not looking good. You guys see how much rust there is? The good news is down there at the end of the neck, just out of where you guys can see, it doesn't look as bad and there's definitely some fuel still in it. Albeit I'm sure it has a lot of water, just judging by the moisture there. So, yeah, I don't know. We're gonna probably bleed the fuel system and just see what happens. Hey. I think. All right, well, we just connected our batteries here with a little bit of hoopy engineering. Didn't have the right kind of crossover cable handy. We weren't really counting on the machines missing leads. So using what we had, we got a pair of vice grips in the works. And of course you can't have a redneck battery set up without some vice grips. Coming down here, we got the cables going right to the ground and the power on the starter, which is exactly the way it was run from the factory. And before everybody starts telling me, oh, those jumper cables aren't heavy enough. They are actually, these are one aught welding cable, about the same size as the original leads on the machine, albeit they're 20 foot long, but should work. Let's hit the cab and see if we got any uh, juice. The cab on this machine is just beautiful. I think the raccoons have gotten to it a bit. Just reupholster that seat, she'll be mint. All right, let's see if we got any juice here. Oh, something's happening. Something's happening. Is that a fuel pump? All right, so we're uh, just about ready to try to turn this pig over and fire it up, but we decided we should probably come up with a good plan to shut this thing down. The engine shutdown cable here is just flapping the breeze. Not even 100% positive where it hooked up to. The throttle linkage here, it looks like if you push it back, it goes into some sort of detent to shut her down, maybe, sorta. Of. We don't know. Definitely not factory. Definitely a little janky. Um, so, basically the, if we have to or if it would run away we need to have a way to shut it down so the best way to do that on a diesel would be start it for air well any engine so the way the filter housing is and all the dirt and crud that the mice have drug into it we don't want to remove the filter element entirely to be able to choke it out that way because it's probably going to suck crap in so we're going to loosen up the clamp here and have it able to be easily popped off in case we needed to slide something over that turbo and suck her down Wow, you hit it. They're shooting at us. <laughs> pew, pew. Save my poor little wrist. The action shots, Mike. <laughs> there we go. So that actually looks like it will slide off pretty easy in a pinch if we needed to. And we have a uh, flat piece of something laying here we can stick on there and choke her out so it's a good thing we did this too i wasn't thinking on the last loader we revived the turbo was very stiff i could barely move it this one i can't move it without bending fins and i don't don't want to do that so we'll take the oil line off squirt some coil down in there try to get that shaft freed up uh -huh. i'm just gonna Fill this port full of coil now, hopefully get this turbo spinning again. I did you not? I don't know if you guys can see in there. It's just about two or three minutes sitting with the coil on it. it spins like a dream. Can't make that up. All right, I guess we're uh, about ready to see if this thing's gonna do anything for us. We got our flat piece of tin to go over the turbo in case uh, she runs away. Batteries are properly connected and all the fluids look marginal. Good enough. Is that a fuel pump? Yeah, it's priming itself. That's the hardest thing. 
Well, as soon as I turned that key on, we started hearing this fuel pump down here running, and then we started having second thoughts about that nasty fuel in the tank. Uh, so we did pull the line off and drain some out, and it, it didn't look horrendous, but we actually had a spare tank we just threw on here as an auxiliary, so this is full of diesel. Run straight down here into our pump, running through the filter. We put fresh fuel in the filter with some uh, Lucas injector cleaner. And now we get to see if this pig's gonna fire up. All right, here we go. We're gonna give her, give her a shot, see if she cranks over. Nothing. thing is in neutral, right? Yeah, it's in neutral. Alright, contact. Yeah, buddy. Contact. Woo! Stop. More? Yeah, get a little more. Just that. Keep that, uh, Okay, well, my apologies, but we got a little ahead of you guys on the diagnostics here. So this is the top of our vein pump here, the injection pump. And let me see that thing real quick. So this is the top of it. It sits down in there like so. Anyway, there's a little solenoid in here that when you turn the key on, it should pull that back and allow the fuel rack to move back and forth. Well, it wasn't working, so that was half the problem. And after we pulled it off, if you can see that fuel that was in there is pretty nasty. It's pretty brown. But anyway, there's a fuel rack right here. See that piece that's sliding? That was stuck in the off position, like right there. So after a little bit of wiggling, she finally popped loose. And I'm guaranteeing that was some of our problem, at least, if not all of it. Seems to be working good now. The wire going to that little solenoid was bad. The buddy's replacing that right now. We're gonna bolt it back together and hopefully we get some fuel up to our injectors.
Okay, we got the top of the injection pump all hooked back up. We got our new eyelet on the wire to run the solenoid in there. And all the injectors are still cracked, so yeah, hopefully we can we can make this whole girl squirt. Contact. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Keep going. We got it on five, waiting on number six still. Hold that. Sounds like a battery getting a little low. Yeah. I think she'll crank now, hold on. Let me tighten all these up. We definitely got fuel moving though. That's a vast improvement over what we had. What are the odds this thing's gonna charge? I will say. The other one charged. The orange crush, she was charging. All right, you guys get the idea. I'm gonna tighten all these injector lines. Contact.
gallon auxiliary tank didn't have that much fuel in it. So now we're going to have to reprime and go again. But it moves! We made it this far. Yeah, I've seen that now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I backed out of its hole. Now it's three feet in the air. Well, boys, I'd say that's a pretty successful revival right there. Wasn't the easiest one I've ever done, but probably one of the most rewarding is when you get to immediately pick up a car with it. Now, I promised the guy I wouldn't make a mess up here, but I'd love to just throw that thing. I'm sure you guys would like to see it, but unfortunately, not on today's show. So the old 645B here, I think, is going to be a more permanent addition to the fleet. And the big orange crush, the Clark Michigan 125, is going to be going up for sale here one of these days once I throw some new paint on it. But I'm pretty happy with this machine. It seems pretty well responsive. The brakes even work. Would you believe that? The gauges seem to be functioning. 
I think we're going to end up giving it a complete service once we get it home, but overall I'm pretty happy with it right now. The forks aren't even bleeding off that fast. So anyways guys, I guess that about wraps up this video. If you like the video, don't forget to give it a thumbs up if you like uh, resurrecting big heavy equipment. If you like picking up cars, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you can stick around and see what else we get into. If you didn't notice, I got some Diesel Creek merch finally, available at dieselcreek.com if you guys want to get some of that. But anyways, we're on to start up the old 977 now, so make sure you guys hang around and get to see that video. I'll catch you later. Neutral safety.